If you know Tassie like we do, then you'll know it's rugged, untamed, four-wheel drive country that's sure to get the adrenaline pumping for any outdoor enthusiast. That's why we love it, and that's why we keep coming back for more. Oh. How's the undies? <laughs> I don't know, I've got two pairs on, mate. Uh, that is one. Of, I reckon that view is one of the greatest views in four-wheel driving. Oh, big time, mate. It's, it's my favourite track in Australia. That's Whoa! Heavy call, folks. If you haven't uh, realised where we are, this is the Climbies track in... In Tasmania, the Wild West Tasmania, Coast, mate. mate. And we're going to do, on this trip particularly, probably the most iconic tracks in Tasmania. Some of them, and some of them that people don't even know about. Yeah, that should be iconic because it's so bloody good. So bloody good. Tasmania turning it on for us. Hey, there's the weather. I shouldn't say that because it could change. <laughs> Barney, having a ball? Mate, loving it. This is awesome. You fun. ready to do this? Absolutely, can't wait. Stu? This is fantastic, mate. Imagine being the first bloke to drive this. I don't want to imagine that. That would have been well, very sketchy. About two, two minutes ago. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway. Folks, my advice to you is grab something out of the fridge right now, crack it, because it's got to be cold and fizzy. Sit down in your favourite chair and enjoy the very best yeah. of Tasmania. All right. All right. Stu, you are up, sir. Mate, Thanks, I'm mate. going to take that towel off my seat and bring <laughs> it out. <laughs> Get, Get in on the towel. Looking for a mad deal on the gear that you're chasing? Like this awning, I've got you covered. Keep an eye out throughout this video for an exclusive discount code and get 10% off store-wide for all Full Drive Supercenter YouTube subscribers. And as always, enjoy this adventure because this is an epic trip. We've got a plan and we're gonna try our best to stick to it. We're starting out on the Climbies track and then making our way out to the Pyman Heads area before returning on the infamous inland loop track. All this with some cracking Tasmanian camping. I am absolutely pumped. We've got some familiar faces on this trip, which consists of myself, Shauno, Barney from Legend X, and of course, Stu Dog from Wholesale Automatics. This is one team I know will get us through. West Coast of Tassie, I get a sore neck around here because I'm constantly looking at the view. <laughs> it's just oh, it's staggering. Today, the ocean though, ain't for beginners. Have a look at those waves. Woo. We're down here on the west coast of Tasmania, and this here is the start of the Climbies track. I am so excited. My words are not going to do this justice because I absolutely love this track. To drive so close to the wild west coast, see the waves crashing up against a cliff line that you drive across, gets the blood pumping. The Climbies track links Granville Harbour to Trial Harbour. The word on the street is that it takes uh, approximately four hours to complete, depending on the conditions. We're taking it on from north to south, so really all we've got to do is keep the ocean on our right. It's September now, and the river systems around here are still raging. With plenty of water in the rivers, I'm sure things could get a bit sloppy out on the tracks, and I guess we'll find out soon enough. Oh, this is a muddy little track. First little challenge in Tassie. And it's a bit of a doozy. Like a lot of things in Tassie, your first look at them doesn't always indicate exactly how hard it's going to be. But as you can see, Shauno's made it look easy. Stu Dog has picked a slightly harder line there. He's come unstuck. I think he's going to have to reverse and have another crack at this. better line and stew straight through. It's all about picking a perfect line in four-wheel driving. Having seen the line that Stu took, I tried to straddle that rut, but the rear end got caught and slid into it. No problems though, Mighty D-Max, up and out. Righto, Barney. What a weapon, just walks on through. Right, oh, up ahead, it looks as if we're gonna get a bit muddy. What I wanna do is actually get up to the start of the challenge and then, if I can get to the start of the challenge, it's really slippery. I don't wanna be staying in that water too long. Oh, it's a big rock. Sean is actually trying to get around an extremely deep mud hole on the left-hand side. In fact, if you look closely, you can see a stick. We've placed that there so that we know not to go any further left than that stick because it's about a metre drop-off. Oh, that's nasty. Once he's through there, it's a sequence of massive bog holes that we've got to get through. <laughs> a 
baby. How good is that? What an animal. Absolute animal. That's why you make a diesel nice and powerful, so you can do stuff like that. That is, that is exactly what it's supposed to do. Wow, that was awesome. Yeah, that was a, that was a committed drive. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, Stu. Now, bang, bang on, I can do this. You've got to do the same thing, mate. Yeah, I'm my, Super casual. On my little 33s. You'll be right, you'll be right. <laughs> you know the line now. Yeah, just yeah. fall in a hole and drive. put the foot down. Yep, go for it, dude. Go up. Didn't look that hard, Sean, eh? Okay, Stu, you've seen how it's done. Time to step up, mate. Once again, we've got to get Stu around the right-hand side of that bog hole before he can even attempt to tackle those massive ruts. Damn it! You stop there, Stu, and come back with a little bit more gusto. Yeah, Stu's fallen into that first rut. If he'd stayed a little bit higher to the right and then gone in, he might have avoided the worst of it. Hey, he's moving. That'll do you, mate. Righto, he's through the worst of the boggy section and now he's going to have a run at the rest. Mate, it look easy. Okay, it's my turn in the D-Max. Found the only rock on the track. Yeah, and the other. Like Stu, I'm going to have the same disadvantage as smaller tyres and much less clearance. Anything's going to catch me out, that's going to be it. Oops. I think I found every rock on that track then. <laughs> you can see I stayed a little higher on the right hand side on that line and avoided jumping into that first lot of ruts and I was so close to making it through that second lot. Come on, mate. Oh. Nah. That was so close. Now I win from here. More? When winching in situations like this, what I try and do is let the winch do 90% of the work. The other 10%, of course, is done by the four-wheel drive. But it's by listening to the winch and learning when that winch is at full stretch and then just giving a small amount of drive that you get maximum efficiency. I was very close to driving that. It's just such a fine line. Yeah. Yep, you're all good, mate. Rattle. OK, I'm through. Now it's Barney's turn. This should be entertaining. Woo, you're up, big fella. All right. Do it. Go berserker, big fella. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This mud is seriously greasy, and Barney being the last one through may find this the hardest. Head on up, head on up. Bit rough on the gear today, mate. Ain't gonna do it properly. Not bad, huh? Thank you. Thanks for making that clear for me, guys. There you go. He's made that look easy. Very okay, nice. time to get a move on. Very nice. The next few sections of mud are fun to drive, but don't really present us with any problems. The base is pretty firm, and we've got the traction we need to pull through. I'll tell you what, right now, I'm getting excited because soon, we should be up on a challenge that isn't for the faint-hearted. It involves a creek crossing and a waterfall. That's all I'm gonna say back on higher ground and we have a brief moment to take in this spectacular bit of coastline. It's a bit high country this one, Shauna. Yeah, it's amazing this um, scenery just opens right up and you've got rocks, mountains and um, I think there's a little creek crossing down here. What? What a bloody place! I'd go so far as to say this is the most like spectacular scenery wise track you could possibly do. I, I don't know if there'd be one. Maybe Blue Rag, that might be up there. Yeah, it's, this is just spectacular. It's all different too, like one moment you're on the edge of a cliff face and you've got the wild west coast bashing up against it and then the next moment you're just driving on top of a ridge line and um, yeah, mountains all around. Here it is, the one we've been waiting for, the waterfall challenge. Before we commit, we're going to walk it and check it out first. Ah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> 
This is the famous waterfall crossing, eh? This is it, mate, and um, that's the track to get out of here. <laughs> that's insane. Uh, yeah. So you've yeah. got to stick hard right. Yes, Sean, oh, you're spot on, mate. You do not want to get it wrong. And where it feels horrible, of course, is the natural lie of the land is to push your vehicle, lean your vehicle toward the cliff edge. You just got to hang on, ride it out, keep it smooth, and get away from that edge. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Let me tell you one thing. Yep. You don't want to get it wrong. No, 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 no. Get it wrong. Oh, I want to watch you two go first. That's good. <laughs> I've done this climb twice now. I won't lie to you, it's proper scary, this track. It doesn't look super hard, but when you're driving it, it's another thing, and it's so spectacular. It's my favorite part of track, out of any track in Australia. This is one serious challenge, because make a wrong move here, and it's all over. There's a cliff straight down there. I'm driving across a waterfall right now. That's, uh, you don't want to look down, holy heck. I don't like this. Boys, this is so scary. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. There's actually a significant amount of flow across that waterfall, and if it was any wider, I really think it'd be quite sketchy. That's a good drive, Sean. Ah, oh, it's gonna feel good to get to the top of this. This is the most spectacular full drive track in Australia. Look at that view. <laughs> if you can see what I can see blows me away every time I come and drive this track. The climbies track on the west coast of Tasmania scared the heck out of me. Slow and steady wins the race. Stu's big advantage here of course is the auto. He can take this super slow and still have a lot of control. That looks horrible from here. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. He got hung up right at the base there on a couple of rocks and that would have felt sketchy as. How did that feel, mate? Pretty good. You I've got no words. I it's the first time I've seen Stu with no words. How yeah, good's that? <laughs> I climbed this rock once. I thought that was a stupid thing I ever did. <laughs> that was that view though, that's mate. That's up there. Yeah, that's fantastic. That is good, isn't it? That, that makes a lot better here than you did over there. <laughs> this is one of the more sketchy things I've done. Have a look at that right on the edge of a cliff on a waterfall in Tasmania. Left hand turn and you're back up and out, but what a crossing. If you ever get a chance, honestly, after having done it, you've got to try that. That's uh, you do not want to go down there. That's not where you want to be. Look at that view though. The most spectacular view you'll ever see in a four wheel drive, I this think. This is the most spectacular left hand turn you'll ever take. Now, Barney. This is very different inside the car. Are you mad? What am I doing? Are you crazy? That truck of his does lean a lot. That's what you get when you get a lot of flex. Let's see how he goes. All right, he's across the water crossing. No doubt about it. That is a sketchy piece of four wheel driving and we've all done really well. Good stuff, Barney. Matt. That is awesome! That's amazing! Woohoo! Yeah! Oh my god, how good is this place? Woo 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 woo! With that challenge done and dusted, we've got camp on our minds. I don't know about you blokes, it's um it's getting a little bit late in the day. What do you reckon? I was just uh, thinking the same thing, mate. That sun's almost gone down. Yeah, it's actually like seven o'clock at night, you know, Tasmania style, so it means we've only got about an hour of light if we're lucky. I think it's gonna be dark pretty soon to be honest. What's your plan, mate? Just uh, another another trackside camp, you reckon? Yeah, I think we'll have to, mate, because uh, the climbing track certainly isn't done at the moment. There's a few hard bits, a few big ruts, I remember, um, up in front, and we probably don't want to tackle those at night, so I reckon we just look at the BMS, try and find an open patch, and um, yeah, pull up stumps for the night. First, though, we've got quite a challenging little climb. At the base of this climb, there's a massive rut. As you can see, well, Sean o makes it look like it's just a dimple. Have a look at Stu, though. He's right deep down into there. Ooh, did you hear that? That had to be air coming out of the beat. I reckon that's driver's side, beat off. We're gonna have to fix that for Stu. The old D-Max didn't even notice it was there. Good stuff. And Barney's through too. I'm always stoked when Barney makes it through something and doesn't break anything. <laughs> Beer's on you tonight, mate. Well, I reckon there's one in every group. In our group, we've got a Stu. <laughs> mate, what have you done? You've 
Taking the tyre off the wheel, that's not supposed to be like that. Well, we needed to clean the beater anyway. And you needed to clean the and beater. I'm really thirsty. It's getting dark. So you're trying to just basically make sure that we don't drive anymore if we can. Oh, I'm happy to drive all night. Yeah. Well, not. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon this is a good spot, mate. I reckon <laughs> this is fate. This is a full drive fate talking to us right now that this is a good spot for a campsite. I reckon just on the grass there, maybe. Yeah, yeah come with you. Right. Just, um, just get this tyre back on. Now, whilst that's not a recognised technique in the four-wheel driver's handbook, it certainly is effective. <laughs> Nearby, we find a little spot to camp, so it's all hands on deck getting everything set up. Well, I'm pretty excited tonight because tonight marks the first time, believe it or not, that I'm staying in a rooftop tent. And um, I'm always a bit late to get on the things. I've always been in swags, and look, don't get me wrong, they're super comfortable. I do love swags, but I can't wait to experience a rooftop tent. Well, if that's set up, Count me yourself. That really didn't take that long at all. My bed's ready. I've already got my sleeping bag and pillow in there. I did that before I left home. Yep, nice and warm. Mate, cracking day. Oh, how good is this track? And Ripper. the weather's <laughs> held. I didn't look up. I didn't even look up. <laughs> the weather's uh, held, mate. No rain. No right. rain. Superb. I'm starving. What you got to plan? Starving. I'm Starving. actually pretty hungry, yeah. Yeah, I did say I'd cook when I was in the car before. What are you thinking? Mm. Well, I'm thinking... Barbecue? Similar. Steaks? Similar. Ooh. Yep. So, look, look. No, no, not similar at all. Okay. I'm thinking something <laughs> that's going to warm us from the inside out. You're going to bake something with chilies? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Couple of different types of chilies. I even had a chat with Stu on the side to see, because he got, he's got weird chilli sauces. Yeah, he does, like he does, he does. Chilli master. So, he's not so what are you making? Um, like a chilli, like a nachos. curry? Nachos. Nachos. You good. can't make nachos out here. On a campfire. You better see this to believe it. Nachos on a campfire? Yep. Mm -hmm. Give the it. man some room. Step ah. back. Ooh, let's get, get ready. Up. Get ready. Nachos around the campfire. I was going to stay here. Yeah, Pretty stoked. Do it anyway. quicker. Yeah, hurry up. How good is this? We're on the Kwame track. One of my favourite tracks. It's a bit of an unplanned campsite, but sometimes the best ones are just like that. And when you're on the Kwame track, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't get much better. So tonight, I promised the boys something that's going to warm up from the inside out. I'm thinking the old fire breathing nachos. Now that, that's that's one of my favourite meals. I, I like a bit of nachos. It's a good sort of pub feed and around a campfire. How good is it? So first things first, I just got this oil nice and hot. I've chopped up a couple of onions. Here come the lads now. I rated you a truck, mate. Check this out. This is this will get you a good idea of what we're doing tonight, right? Yep. Peri peri seasoning. Oh, can you go oh yeah. That's, that's, that, that's about a five out of ten. Jalapenos. They're my favourite um, jalapenos. I want to show you this one first. This one slap your mama. Now, <laughs> we've had this one. This is a good, a good, this is the real hot one. This is about an eight out of ten. An eight out of ten. And then the little one with the key ring. The key ring is a skull. It's after death sauce. After death? Probably tried it before you Yeah, that's that's Yeah, look, look, it's got a little that's a that's an eleven out of ten. We'll put him down for a second. What are you doing here? I'm just trying to lose. Alright, here you go. Alright, you're gonna grab some of that what? mince out. That's really hot. Yeah, that's it's, a hot one. Not I said that's an eight out of ten, mate. Oh, I should snort that in the fridge, mate. Bit of um <laughs> so bit of garlic. Yeah, grab some mince out. Oh. Alright, bit more garlic. What's wrong, mate? You're really, your eyes are watering. <laughs> what I'm doing here is I'm just breaking up the mince, putting the mince straight in with the onion and the garlic. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chuck a little Ooh. bit of the old, uh, it's a secret ingredient, mate. What do you got there? Uh, just taco spice mix. I reckon, you know, you've seen me use a couple of packets. Obviously, I could make this up from scratch, just knock it up, you know. But I um, choose to use packets because we're camping and it makes it easier. Look, there's a bit of chilli. Yeah, whack that in there. Put it, put it in that. That's going to taste nice, that. That's yeah. not a hot chilli. Mm. Have a bit of a stir here, shall I? Have a stir, mate. Have a stir. Put some beans in, mate. You gotta drain those first, or no? You can actually use the liquid in that. The beans has got water in it, so you just put the whole thing in there. You can't go too crazy on this. It's like your that mother. That is so hot. Yeah. It, that's heaps. That's that's a lot. That's heaps. Yeah, that one that makes me nervous to put on that. When you when you do this one, literally a drop could change your life. So look, <laughs> when we're out so far from hospitals and stuff like that, you just we just want to take this real carefully. Don't. What are you doing, mate? <laughs> a in there, no, no, put a bit more. No, trust me. Really? Trust me, mate. You're a little bit apprehensive. I've got no how, idea. How this is going to work on a campfire, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the trick to this is you cook the fiery um, chili con carne bit up first. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to line the bottom with the corn chips. Yep. I'm with you so far. Spoon of that yep. on. Yep. Our foil on top. Ah, uh, yes. Down near the fire. A couple of little coals strategically placed. <laughs> we'll melt that all together. That just goes straight on top, like that. You're just going to sit around the fire with one of these trays, 
trust me, they're gonna, it's a real little morale boost for this one. Oh, look at these little look individual packets. How good's that? Oh, and that's it's not sick. done yet. That looks cool. We got any left in here? Oh, look, there's a little. And because I like to treat you blokes. Yep, what do you got there? I've got the old four cheese melt. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Four cheeses? I'm thinking, what do you reckon the salsa on now, so it heats up with it now. So I'm thinking about that much for each one. Yep. And even chuck a couple of little coals on top, and I reckon 10 minutes top, tops, and we've got. I'm dinner. not going to give it five, mate. I'm yeah. starving. Yeah. <laughs> Coming in hot, bro. Yep. Yeah, put a bit of stuff on. Look at that. This looks good. Man. Really good. That is something else. Everyone likes sour cream? Yeah. Jeez, that's a, that's a fair old swag. Yeah, a little bit of it. Yeah, Look at yeah. that. That looks so good. It's only like, ten, like not even 10 minutes really on the fire. It's going to melt that cheese. Five, five minutes, yeah. Wait, what are you going to put now? A bit of avocados? Yeah, if you want. Mm -hmm. I want. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, there's that little bit of mm. 10 minutes on the fire. <laughs> Make those corn chips really crispy. Everything gets yeah, nice and hot. Mm, put a bit mm, of sour cream. Oh, smoky. All, You've excelled. It's not bad, is it, at all? Absolutely excelled. Cheap and easy meal. Anyone can do. The old fire breather nachos. <laughs> it's a big favourite around the boys, eh? Let's go around the fire. It's freezing out here. Woo! I might stick my face in this, actually. It'll warm it up. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam, but warning it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At 4 Drive Drive Supercenter you get more for less. It's day two of our West Coast adventure and it looks to be a cracking day at that. We've woken up here trackside but are going to get back in the saddle straight away and complete the climbies track as we were supposed to do last night. Boys, I've got this tiny little um, ridge in front of us. I say tiny because it's about a land cruiser width apart, I think. Um, yeah, you want to keep your eyes on that one. I'll follow you, Stu. If I see one side dip, I'll go the other way. There's another way. To the left, all right, depending on which way you dip. Oh, that was the edge of your canopy. I heard that noise from in my vehicle. I thought something was wrong with me driving over the bridge. Looks like a bit of a rut as well to get out of here. How yeah, good is this? We're nearly done on the climbies track, but um, certainly plenty more in the area. Some big holes there, grain like a swallow. This morning we want to get back to Granville Harbour, but then head out to the Pyman Heads from there. This is going to be a fairly long day behind the wheel, but we're all keen as mustard to get at least as far as conical rocks by nightfall. One thing Tassie is never short of is water, because of the sheer amount of rain they get here, particularly on the west coast, which receives around 2,000 millimetres annually. Look at this. This is, um, this is quite tough by the looks of it. Look at that. You can see that exit is really steep and quite rutted. Oh, that's cool, that's um, yeah, you gotta get into that one boys. Oh, it's steep. Such a cool track. I don't know if you can see out my window, it's just views the whole coastline. One of the big problems I've often encountered with water crossings in Tasmania is the tannins in the water that makes the water go black. Of course that means you can't see how deep the crossing is. You'll be right Stu, you've got this. Stu's not hanging around, he's straight up and out of there using the right pedal. Oh, that's sick. My turn. I know what the D-Max is capable of, I'll walk up there. That is something else, that is. That's very cool, that's very cool indeed. It's funny, have a, have a look at the water on your right hand side when you come through there Barney, it kind of goes down a plug hole. Look at that, so easy, I've got time to talk on the UHF as I'm going up. Yeah, the plug hole looks pretty cool, mate. This looks a bit aggressive. Yeah, straight up the hill. Good work, mate. The big Lux, she does you proud. It's 
quite a challenging little crossing, guys. Hey, mate, cast your memory back to, uh, oh, Struthard, it'd probably be, oh, heck, four or five years ago now. Maybe even longer, mate, I can't remember back that far. And after that trip, you said to me you'd never thought of Tassie much as a four-wheel drive destination. Your mind was pretty firmly set on the top end. I reckon if I had to put money on it, you've changed your mind. Yeah, you're about bang on, mate. After travelling here a few times now, it's one of my favourite places to come in a four-wheel drive. Yeah, mate, when we put the year's plans together and we put Tassie on the map, your eyes always light up with good reason. Have a look at that view. You could be driving through the peaks of New Zealand. It just looks so mountainous. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you're in another world out here. And it, and it really is the wild west coast. People say that for a reason. It's just wild out here. And no one really comes out here because it's, it is quite remote. Just looking at my fuel gauge. And the reason I'm looking at it is because, just waiting for Sean to get down what is a pretty gnarly hill here. I've used exactly, well, just under, just under two thirds of a tank. So by the time I get out of here, I reckon I've used half a tank. I'm absolutely blown away by how economical this bad boy is. It just sips at fuel. Whereas some of the bigger rigs out here, I know Sean O for a fact, uses significantly more. So yeah, I'm just blown away by how economical this little D-Max is. And this is a technical little bit of driving, hence, oh, hence me being in low range. Oh, struth. <laughs> See so much water on these tracks. It's um, pretty rocky though, there's heaps of traction. You'll typically find, but so much water around it. This rains a lot down here in Tassie, it must do. And I suppose when you get water on the tracks, you get ruts because <laughs> bits of the track wash away and you typically lift tyres. That's, that's half the fun. We don't, yeah, it <laughs> drifted up the hill. Ooh, the back wants to step out on that one. Ooh, hello. <laughs> forward, shoot forward. Some of these rock faces are completely off camber. It's easy to get your wheel placement slightly wrong and lose traction. This last part of the climbing track has some really technical sections where you really have to think about where each of those wheels are going. I just lost everything off my seat. Out here, it's key to have a good suspension set up to try and counteract and absorb the big ruts and boulders. <laughs> Barney's picked a great line through here and you can see that suspension set up working really well for him. He's got power, suspension, lift, tyres, it's all working as it should, and Barney's making that look easy. Hey, not too bad, not too bad. Good girl, good girl. Yeah, boys, we've got some big ruts in front of us. Um, these ones look really big, actually. The closer I drive up to them, the bigger they get. Yeah, they look a bit serious from back here. Oh, whoa, that's an angle. Flex there, buddy. Don't want to fall in is the key. A lot of these ruts are created by a combination of two things, of course, one of which is use. There's a lot of four-wheel drives that come up through here, get stuck, and use a bit of wheel spin to get out. And the second, of course, and probably most importantly, is erosion. Yeah, you just want to get your line pretty perfect in there. I, I slipped out and it didn't, didn't work real well for me at all. Would you have a go at this? This is the line I took. And you can closely, you'd actually see where the side biters of the general grabbers were actually biting into the side of this rut and gave me enough traction to drive this pretty committing line. Now, I wouldn't have tried it if I didn't have a tyre that had those aggressive sort of side biters. It gave me a lot of traction and um, confidence to drive tough tracks like this. And if you follow it all the way up, you can see that even though there's a lot of clay on this track and, and it's really that slippery sort of stuff with no traction, that it actually ejects some of this clay out of the, out, out of the side biters and out of the tread, and that gives me a lot more traction. That worked an absolute treat. This thing is as sketchy as all heck, mate. Yeah, it's a proper track, mate. You've got to commit to this one a little bit. You can either try the hard right-hand line or the one where you've got your left-hand driver's side halfway on the rut. That's the one I did with a little, I don't know, a little feathering of um, um, determination. Yeah, so head a little right, a little left, a little right, lots of pedal. Okay, got it. Go berserker! <laughs> Just go berserker! No, don't do that. I don't think we should be encouraging him like that. Yeah, so go forward then left, eh? This is all about careful wheel placement and calm, calculated blast of throttle. Yeah. 
Barney's concentrating hard here, and it's paid off by the looks of things. That's a good drive, mate. <laughs> yeah! Loving it. That's one big hole. That's a really big hole. There you have it, fellas. That pretty much marks the end of the climbies track. Mate, I don't care what you got in store next, because uh, that's it. I'm not going to say the pinnacle, but that is one of the best tracks I've ever driven anywhere in Australia. It was sketchy in a few places, but very scenic, fellas. I cannot believe how good that was. Yeah, it's pretty epic, mate. Thanks for bringing us here. You wait till you see what I've got installed next, mate, because a few tracks around this West Coast area that <laughs> I'll test you and your four drive, that's for sure. On we go towards Granville Harbour, which is where the start of the track is to reach the Pyman Heads. I believe this is uh, one of your favourite little tracks, mate, the old um, Granville Harbour to Pyman Heads track. Yeah, mate, I've done it. I think it's about the third or fourth time I've done it, and I rate it just like you did the Climbies track, and for good reason too, I rate this as being uh, my favourite track in Tasmania. I can probably see why. It's pretty scenic by the looks of it. If this is the first 100 metres of the track, mate, if it gets better than this, you have to pinch me, mate, because um, I'll keep on dreaming. It's another world. We've got the conical rocks up there that just look fantastic. You've got the coast all the way, some bog holes, some hill climbs, and then we've got a massive beach run that we've got to do. Great big long beach run, but you've got to sort of pick your areas because if the tide's up and the waves are up, it actually uh, cuts your progress. There's quicksand on it too, which can be quite deadly. And uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil it just yet or ruin it just yet, but wait till you see the uh, wait till you see the campsite at the end of all this. Just like the climbing track, this one has a lot of water about. This track has got its fair share of sandy sections and fairly steep dunes to negotiate. But with recent rains, the sand is wet, compacted and pretty easy to drive. Oh, how good is this, boys? Straight down onto the beach. Head north. If your tyres get wet, go north more. Ah, oh, this is cool. Look at this, it's a massive beach of big dunes. It looks like something out of Mad Max. That is awesome. This is pretty sick, eh? It's no tracks, there's a quad track just here, but there's no other tire tracks anywhere. As nice as this is, we've still got to be careful because the beach has been known to have some sections of sinking sand, or quicksand. Beach driving, I love it. I'm gonna rate beach driving. From all the different disciplines in the four wheel driving world, I love beach driving. Grew up doing it, it's actually where I learnt to drive a vehicle. And this day and age, when I get on a beach, I still just love the feeling of being able just to drive for miles down a big windswept open beach with the ocean on one side, dunes or whatever it is on the other. I think it's the ultimate expression of freedom in a four-wheel drive, beach driving. I love it to pieces. The beach soon turns back into track and we're on course to reach the conical rocks before dark as planned. Have a look at that. That's some serious Tasmania mud. Right, here he goes. Oh. This is slippery. Right there, that's exactly where a good set of mud tyres will separate you from the rest of the crew. What's going on with that rig of yours? Have you uh, you done something secret you haven't told me about? It's got a spring in its step. Uh, you've noticed, have you, mate? Yeah, I've actually um, just put a new um, turbo in. It's a CT26 um, high flow turbo by MTQ, and it's um, yeah, give me a stack more power, mate. Filth. That's uh, certainly made a noticeable improvement to uh, what I could see from behind before. Yeah, mate, it's made it so much more enjoyable to drive, that's for sure. Suddenly, and we're into some slop. We're going to need a bit of momentum to carry us through. Mud driving is one of those things where you do need a bit of right boot. Of course, momentum is your friend. If you can carry speed through, you've got a good chance of getting out. A bit more tassy mud for a change. Oh, it looks pretty, pretty wild too. Oh, oh yep, get into it. That's a little bit of fun. I think this is uh, where mud is born, and then it just distributes around the rest of Australia. Well, I was promised mud, and I'm expecting more of it as we go further down the road. Just Barney to come through now. 
He's done it and we've made it to conical rocks. I love it when a plan comes together. Look at those freaking rocks, that's awesome. Everything's awesome. I rate this section of the track here from sort of conical rocks right through to the heads as my favourite section of track. It's just bloody spectacular. On a day like today, with the sun setting as it is, I reckon you're seeing it in about as good a condition as you ever would. Just outside the Pyman Heads is a little camp spot that will be ideal for all of us tonight. <laughs> well, this is an unreal place. How good is this? Fire going, we've got a beer in hand, there's a feed on the way, and we're at a remote location, the Pyman Heads, which is absolutely beautiful. This is why we own four wheel drives for this moment right here. And it honestly doesn't get any better. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. It's time to get packed up because today is our final day and we're taking on the rugged inland loop track. Well boys, that was a great little campsite. Weather turned it on too, mate. Oh, I know, they've got a bit of protection from the wind. You know, perfect part of the world. Challenge now, boys, is getting out of here. We're not going to take the beach run back because that'd be too darn easy. Uh, I reckon we take the inland track back. So what have we got down there? Just more mud, mud, and mud, mate? Mate, it changes so much from year to year, I don't really know what to expect, but last time I was out here, it was bone dry. Time before that, trucks on 37s were getting stuck, mate. Lots of big rocks, and this looks quite shaly. Oh, there's some traction there. It's actually a hell of a lot steeper when you're up here. Heaps of traction, but um, yeah, you want to pick your line pretty good. Oh, give it some. I don't know if it some's a good idea on this hill. Ooh. Oh, oh struth, Stu. Picking up wheels, bouncing up the hill. I tell you what, that just shows how steep that hill really is. Ah, you wanted wheel lift. You got a wheel lift. All right, it's my turn in the D-Max. You know what, steep hills like this are really easy in the D-Max. It's got that low center of gravity, good traction control, and it just manages to climb up anything we pointed at. All right, Barney's up. He loves this stuff. Look at him go. He's not holding back. The concentration on the face. That's something else. <laughs> something else. Hey, boys, some mud up ahead. It's hard to know where to go. I can see some tyre tracks. I'm just going to try and follow those. There you go. I knew it wouldn't be too long until we find mud again. There's no avoiding this one. It's right across the track. Yeah, I flicked a fair bit of mud there. It's not too bad, actually. It's not too deep. This one's all about momentum. It's not a deep mud hole, so that means you can go in with a bit of right boot. Stop in the middle, you will get stuck. If you don't stop, you got this one nailed. Yep, there you go. It's easy done with the right momentum. And of course, Barney ain't getting hung up for anybody. He's straight through there with a smile on his face. That's good work, mate. A bit more mud, boys. In fact, this one um, looks a bit more like a lake than a bog hole. It's, it's quite big. Make stuff happen. Still moving. Being first, Sean went in nice and easy, but he's still got movement. He's coming back for another shot. Nothing is big enough. Make it a bit bigger. I see soot everywhere. Oh, this is like snow, you're just gonna push your way through. <laughs> Looks like there's one thing for it, mate. That's right, give it the berries. <laughs> I 
How good's that? That was a lot of right pedal to get through that one. Stew's up. Learning from Sean is not holding back. But it doesn't look like he's had as much luck. He's going to need a winch here. No, oh, that is really stuck, eh? All right, I'm going in. <laughs> no, I got it. Out! Come on! Hold there, Chip. I'm going to go over the side of there. <laughs> I'm going over here too. All yours. Thank you. Winching. Any winching situation, it's important you choose a good, strong winch anchor. You don't want that letting go. Here we go guys, this is how a pro does it. Second gear, manual, in we go. Alrighty then. Now, while watching the others there, I noticed a slightly different line, and hopefully it works in my favour. Right around this way. <laughs> nice drive, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's sick. Alright, Barney's up. This is going to be entertaining. Come on, Barney! Look at him cheering on. Look at him go. He knows how to use the loud pedal, that's for sure. It's not particularly graceful, <laughs> but he made it through. All right, boys, we've got another bog hole, and it looks like quite a serious one. I might um, stop and just, I don't know, there's so many different lines in here, I might try and pick a, a good way through. Have a look at this one, boys. Hey, yay, 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 yay. Look, I reckon every single line is a potential to get bogged. Oh, 100%. I'm actually going to try and take this one. Okay. I'm gonna go straight here. Yeah, well, going straight makes sense. Yeah, see what happens, eh, boys? Yeah. Big tyres, lots That's of good. power, big lift. Whoa, just made it. Just made that. Ooh, uh, that's uh, quite slippery sort of stuff. Whoa, oh, he's not slowing down. Oh my goodness, Stu, that is just another one of those bouncing techniques you use. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you, it ain't graceful, but it works. <laughs> That's a good drive, mate. Smoked that one. Well done, Stu. Thank you, thank you. He drives that thing hard. Lucky your stuff. My turn next. Now, these ruts, I don't hold out much hope. I reckon the D-Max is going to bottom out here. But we'll give it a red-hot go and see where oh. I get to. <laughs> That's you, buddy. Yes, good try. Good That's go. That's a weird line. That's yeah, a terrible line. Uh, where were you going? Hey, I'm only going, going to come up here. It's a bit easier up this way, I think. Pick the worst <laughs> line possible. <laughs> One for the team, bro. I'd, I'd say, I'd say nearly, but it wasn't nearly. That's enough. Well, we've had a bit of a plot around with a stick. There's about four different, well, maybe more than four, maybe five or six different ways to get back on the main track from over there to over here. And we think that this through here is going to be the best way to go, except for this part right here. I reckon if Sean is going to come unstuck, it'll be in a big way and it'll be right here. Let's wait and see. I, I, uh, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, I would say he won't make it. He won't make it. Let's see. Right on, mate. Definitely going to have our work cut out for us. Big, long bog hole. It looks like uh, maybe one of the easier ones. This track just isn't letting up and we've got more deep bog holes to face. How yeah, good was that? The vehicle's completely covered. It's almost dark in here. There's so much mud on the windows and windscreen. A little bit boggy. I didn't think yeah. you had it through there, but... I oh, just stayed on it. How did it feel? I think once you get through the mud layer with those 35 inch tyres, you find traction. Yep. yep. This this bit's a bit off cambered, so don't go too hard. Yes, yeah, all right. I, I, I was thinking, geez, don't sink too much more. Because it's pretty deep in there, boys. That's the worst bit of it. Here comes Stu. Come on, dog! Come on, come on, come on. Get out, get out. Get through there. He's seen what Sean did and hopes to follow suit. That's good work, mate. <laughs> In we go. All right, now it's my turn. You know what? Yes! Oh! That's a bit 
rough. Man, yes. A win for the D-Max. <laughs> that was cool, man. That was cool. Oh, mate, there was mud just flicking out of that D-Max. Yeah, that's... The whole plan for me was just to keep my foot down. Yep. And that was it. Yep. That was my plan. <laughs> that's all I had. Barney will either end in glory or it's going to go all pear-shaped and he's going to be upside down in there somewhere. All right, mate. You hit this one nice and easy. The boys already cleared the track. Go, Barney! Into him, mate. Oh, with ease, with ease. Mate, just looking at the back of the old GU there and thinking to myself, that's got to be one of the slicker GUs I've seen getting around. And then it sort of triggered my memory, and of course it's got a brand new auto conversion in it. How's it all doing? You've done a top end trip now, Tassie a couple of times. Yeah, mate, now the auto's been really good in this truck. It's made a huge difference. What's the main reason you put one of those in? Would it be for sort of a towing sort of thing? Yeah, I think um, generally speaking, autos are a lot better for towing. You know, it makes, it makes it a lot easier. We're not too sure of the depth of this, and we can't get to it with the sticks attested. So no, it's deep. We've done the old rock, paper, scissors, and Barney lost. So we're going to send him in, but before he goes in, I'll put my sunnies on, because <laughs> yes. look at those legs. Whoa. Look at those legs off. Whoa, mate. Did you get, mate? Like the way yeah, I right. figure as well, like you're going to get wet, obviously, doing this, but yeah. it's better than getting wet carpets and oh, all dry. It's always better to get Barney wet. So this, this bit's what about now? We're sort of three quarters of the way along the inland loop track, and we've got one more substantial bog to get through before we drop back down onto the beach. Now look, when you're wading any crossing like this, don't stick to the middle, because of course, that's not where the vehicle will be driving. It'll be driving on either edge, and that's where the ruts will be. So make sure you get into those ruts so you can really gauge just how deep a crossing is. Bit of water. Righto, Sean's up first. He's gonna make this look easy. Needs attraction, needs attraction. Oh, a few rocks in there. Rocky bottom. Right, eh, Stu? Give it a go, mate. Whoa, Struth. Stu's gone in hard, but it's paying off for him. Here we go. Yeah, piece of cake and good fun too. All right, come on, Barney. Well, like I said, fellas, it's not very deep. But it's a bit rough. It may not be deep, but Barney's causing a splash. That's a good drive, mate. Well done. I don't think it really justified me getting my gear off, but anyway. Well, boys, I can see the ocean now, and I think Granville Harbour's down to our left. Yeah, it's still a fair old hike yet, mate, but I think we're over all the major challenges, and from here on in, it's just a pretty cruisy sort of a run through to Granville, and uh, I don't know about you blokes, but I'm not real keen to get into town just yet. Granville Harbour or bust. Look at that view, unreal. So good. You're looking out over the whole of the bay here. Just crazy scenery. I'm putting it out there, mate. Climbies and Pyman Head, my two favourite tracks in Tassie. And I reckon they're my favourite because of the pure beauty of this part of Tasmania. Pick the right time of year, you'll hardly see anybody. The weather can be a little bit challenging, but that's what makes this place so special. Couple that with the views, the perfect camping, and well, as far as I'm concerned, this is a place I'll come back to for the rest of my life. Is quite a view, boys. I get tired of saying that, do I? Granville Harbour, look at that, jeez. Oh, unreal, mate. And today is probably a calm day, mate. I'd say so. Fantastic weather, isn't it? Glorious <laughs> condition. Well, I reckon what we've just done here, although it was only what, two tracks, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Exactly. I would be pretty confident to say it's the best of the West. I reckon, well, I reckon in terms of scenery, yeah. it's certainly t challenging. I mean, you could yep. be stuck out there for weeks if you didn't get it right. <laughs> exactly, you feel good. <laughs> look, if you came to Tassie and you only did climbies and pymen, and that's all you had time for, I don't think you'd be disappointed. Yeah. You, you wouldn't have wasted your trip. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to say it, Pyman is my favourite. Well, I reckon Kwame's yeah, got it all over, mate. We're at odds, but something about what do you reckon? 
Maybe oh, climbies. Climbies? Yeah. Oh, I love this. That view, that yeah. drive, the well, mud. It's a, it's a, the best thing is, no Commodores anyway. No, there's not. There's absolutely not. It's been a draw between us, folks, so why don't you make the decision, not by watching this DVD, but by getting in a Tassie and do it yourself. Do the pieman, do climbies, camp somewhere around here too, because it's absolutely fantastic. We'll see you down here. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. We haven't had a, what we, haven't had a scallop pie yet. I'm going to find one. A curry scallop pie, mate. A curry That's scallop pie. That's why I come to Tassie half the time. <laughs> get down to Tassie, do these tracks, get yourself a curry scallop pie. We might catch you down here. We might not. We'll catch you next time. Forward drive action. He did it. He did it really well. <laughs> If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new, grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS, able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test. So they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius, and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your four wheel drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery.
Introducing the incredible Adventure Kings Premium Camp Oven Stove. Your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind. One less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too, with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other, with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two tonne ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the four-wheel drive Supercenter website. Now with a two-ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.